parents, and welcome to Open House, and welcome to a year of hybrid school. I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Jennifer Williams, and I will be teaching AP Language and Composition this year. And although this is a unique year and a little bit of a challenge, um, I really do enjoy working with juniors and seniors. I feel like it's such an exciting time for your children and they're trying to figure out what college they want to go to, what they want to do with their futures. And I really love getting to know them and working to help them through that process. So that'll be one of our goals this year. I also wanted to spend a moment talking about communication because with the hybrid model, we're going to be remote some days and school some days. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that won't be true second semester. Um, but right now, here's my email. And then I will be sending you an invitation from Google Classroom once all of the students are in the classroom. And then once you get that invitation, if you choose to accept it, you will get a weekly report from Google Classroom. And I'm really trying to think, if I'm a student, what is the easiest way for me to find my work so that it's clear? And what I'm going to try to do is use Google Classroom pretty exclusively, and I am going to set topics up in the classwork section. And each topic will be the dates for that week. So the first one might say the week of 9-8, because that's when school began for them. And then they'll be able to click on that, and I've been putting in the assignments by the day of the week. So the first word is going to say either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then I'm trying to organize those in order so that students will be able to find things quickly and easily. So I'm hoping that's going to work out. And then in progress book, that's where you will go if you want to look at your child's grade. And then if they are missing any work, that's where it will be marked in progress book. There'll just be a little check mark on missing and then you'll know what needs to be caught up on. And then another important element of AP Language and Composition is the AP Classroom. So the College Board started this last year and they've really made some great updates. We also had a meeting with um, a representative of the College Board about AP Classroom and we're going to use it a little bit more this year than we did last year because they have set up the units and they're suggesting that we follow along in those units when they are suggesting those units be done so that in case something happens again where we were out of school for a time they would know where the students got to and they're going to adjust the test accordingly so there your students are also going to have an account in ap classroom and we'll be working with that and then here's a little overview of what exactly ap lang and comp is it does focus on nonfiction, um, but does involve the study of other anchor fictional texts some poetry and drama it is considered an introductory college course, and you will take the AP exam at the end of the year. A score of three or higher typically earns you college credit or placement in advanced courses in college. Depending on the college or university that your child selects, you want to check that. Um, but all the public universities, um, I think, except for one across the country, accepts this. But that's something you'll have to take a look at. Here are some of the skills that your child should master by taking AP Language and Composition. You're definitely going to write effectively and confidently in college courses across the curriculum. You're going to learn to engage in both formal and informal writing. And we're going to learn close reading techniques to help with reading comprehension. And I think at the beginning of this course, most students don't even know what rhetoric is. So we're going to cover all of that and how language is used and what the rhetorical triangle is um, and how that helps you to be persuasive. Students will examine essays, letters, speeches, novels, poetry, plays, imaginative nonfiction, and visual literature in thematic units. Um, and another important element of the AP classroom are, would be the Socratic seminar. So there is going to be discussion, so students should read and prepare and then be able to share ideas and listen to each other to further develop their critical thinking. And why would this be helpful for a student? Um, here's a couple of pieces of research that the College Board has gathered over the past 20 years. And it's been found that taking an AP course helps students build their critical thinking skills, their confidence, time management, study skills. And that translates into college success. 
So nationally, any student who scored a three or higher on an AP exam typically earn higher grades and they have higher graduation rates than their non-AP peers. And it also seems to suggest that even if they don't earn the three, being in the class just prepares them for college. And then here's an overview of what the test itself will look like. They have a reading section and a writing section. So the reading, they have about an hour and they've changed to five passages and it is now fewer questions but more reading to do and they try to divide those passages up so that several are pre and several are post 19th century writing and then for their essays they have to write three essays they get two hours to do so with a 15 minute reading period to look at the materials one of them is a synthesis essay so it's basically like a research paper that they are putting together except the research is provided for them and they're going to choose between those sources which ones they want to include in their final essay they also do a rhetorical analysis and that's what we're going to start the year with um, that tends to be the most difficult of the three essays for the students and so again we're going to be learning about the rhetorical triangle and we're going to try to help them understand how to write that one first and then I think they're probably most familiar with the argument essay and so we'll study that a little bit later in the year and then do a review of all three right before testing time. Now that I've gone over a little bit about the class itself, I think you've probably already looked at the syllabus that I sent you. Um, all classwork will be submitted in Google Classroom. Please remind students to follow their daily bell schedules whether they are in school or remote and to bring their charged Chromebooks daily. And then I just wanted to end with a picture of my classroom. So this is where your child will be spending time when they are with me in school. And um, I kind of put up a little motto I'm gonna stick with for this year is to stay safe, be kind, and be patient. There's so much going on and I really also want to remind myself about each child's social, emotional well-being. And so please let them know I'm definitely going to be kind and be patient with all of the changes happening. And so if they need to talk to me about anything, please encourage them to do so. And let's have a great year. Sorry I couldn't meet you in person, but talk to you soon.